Hello and welcome back to the Gray Space Podcast. I am Gray. This is my space and this is episode 8 of Gray Space. I changed the lighting again, got negative feedback on the lighting from last episode, and honestly, editing me fully agrees. I was freaking when I put it into Premiere to edit, you know, just add the intro and stuff, get it ready, I was like, god damn, that light is bright. <laughs> I feel bad. The only thing with this lighting though is that we do run a higher risk of the focus being worse because the lighting is poorer, but if y'all are okay with it, I'm okay with it. This is a podcast. You're not even supposed to be looking at me. Guys, I made a fruit smoothie just now, but I think I killed my blender in the process because I had like a little magic bullet, but I was really, I was making that thing put in some fucking work. Um, and it's randomly stopped working. So, hold on, there's a little fruit I have to eat. One sec, one sec. Oh, fuck, where'd it go? There we go. Oh, that was a banana. Oh my god, there's another straw. Oh my god, guys. I kind of fucked up making this smoothie. Hold on. I got it. Well... I actually didn't fuck up making the smoothie. The blender fucked up making the smoothie by breaking. I think that's a sign though. I think that's a sign that I should get a new blender and it be Hello Kitty themed. But that's just what I'm thinking. Anyway, I am drinking, we got a little fruit we have. So in here, here's the breakdown on my smoothie, okay? There is vegan gluten-free protein powder in here. There's a probiotic fruit juice. Um, there is bananas, strawberries, pineapple, and I think some mango in here. That's what the, that's what this is. Not doing water today because I am actually, for the first time in a long time, uh, really ahead of my water intake today. It's like 2 p.m. right now, right? It is 2.01. Um, and I think my water bottle, because you know how my water bottle has the time on it, like where your water should be at that point in the day. It has those lines. Um, the water is at like the 5 o'clock line, so I'm kind of crushing it right now. But this is... Just kind of a, this is a, I mean, I guess they're all technically personal episodes. They definitely would be categorized as personal, but I don't have one pre-planned topic to like talk about for this episode. I am just kind of talking about some stuff in my life, some stuff that's been happening, some stuff on my brain. Um, and before we move any further, Casper does need to make his presence known. He's looking at me and he's like, mom. You've not introduced your special guest. My special guest is Casper for today's episode because Lexi's at work. Speaking of Lexi, well, I don't know if I should, I'm gonna spoil the vlog because this is gonna come out um, before the vlog that I'm currently filming. But this morning I went and deep cleaned the fuck out of my girlfriend Lexi's car today because we're currently sharing her car because I went, this is all spoiling the vlog. This, so this is the only thing I'll say. We went to get my car inspected and there were a few things that uh, need to be fixed on my car before it can pass inspection. And the few things it needs, like two of them are quite expensive. Um, so while I'm just prepping for that big ass fucking purchase I'm gonna have to make and also looking for ways to get it uh, cheaper, we are just sharing Lexi's car cause she, you know, she has a regular job. She goes there. She stays there until she leaves. So I've just been dropping her off and picking her up. And guys, it has been so nice. We both have been like, I love this. I just like that our time together is like longer, you know? And I like getting out of the house early in the morning as well. Uh, Cause Lexi leaving for work is kind of like my start of the work day. But I especially like 
leaving the house with her because it's kind of like you know I don't drive somewhere to go to work so that is kind of like my little commute in the morning to just get me into the work mindset if that makes sense but it has been so nice um and we actually one night not, not nice thing though is that yesterday it started raining in Austin like fucking crazy guys the rain yesterday was scary it started when I was driving to get Lexi from work and it was so bad I was like gr I was white knuckle fucking gripping that steering wheel I had to like just stop in the middle of the road at some point because it was like I can't see <laughs> I can't see the road I can't see the lines on the road. I can't see any, like, I can't see. There's so much fucking wind and water. There were branches falling off trees. It was a scary drive. And it's been sprinkling on and off here today, but really just moody, gloomy day today, which I actually like because going back to my thing about driving in the mornings, Driving in the morning when it's like cloudy out it is like a very nostalgic feeling for me for some reason. It just kind of takes me back to like driving to school. So I thought that was, I'm, I'm enjoying the gloomy weather. All right, let's talk about, what, why are you looking at me like that? Let's talk about something that grinded my gears recently. Um, I am, I guess the war has ended and I think I won it, <laughs> but, um, I got into a, an aggressive note leaving altercation with some of my neighbors in my apartment complex who have gotten it in their brains that I am neglecting Casper and keeping him locked in a cage all day. So, for reference, we have quite fucking noisy upstairs neighbors. The dude that lives there, it's a couple, but the dude that's there all day, just, oh my God, stomping, bang, like, he makes some noises when, like, in the evening, all, all times of day, but there will be some that are like in the evening when, you know, me and Lexi are hanging out, that we are like, it takes us a minute to figure out what the fuck could even be making that noise. That man, ooh, I hope he doesn't see the pearly gates. I don't because he's causing me stress and annoyance. And also, uh, but anyway, I mentioned the upstairs unit in my apartment because they have a fucking, a fuck ass golden doodle that just also makes noise all day. Um, and it's so loud that the neighbors on my floor below their unit on this floor think it's coming from me. So the other day I am about to take Casper out on his morning walk. And when I leave, I notice there's a paper towel with writing taped to my door. And it says something, I mean, I could get the notes, but I, quite frankly, I just don't really feel like getting up. Sorry. Um, but it said, like, I really hope your dog is okay. I hear him crying all day it, and all night. It sounds like he's in the same spot all day. It sounds like he's being kept in a cage. And then it was signed, a concerned neighbor. So, oh. Honey is really into the sunset lamp right now. She's taking away my lighting, <laughs> if you're wondering what's going on there. Um, but I got that and I was a little annoyed just because there's certain things that I am just naturally very defensive of and my care for Casper is one of them. Have I always been the best mom to this dog? No, mentally there were times when I was just not Right. But, oh, if there's one thing about me, if there's one thing about me now, it's that you cannot fucking deny how much I love and care for this dog. Oh my God. He doesn't even have a cage. For reference, it's not me, just so we're clear. He doesn't even have a cage. And also, I'm home all day. 
I work here all day. I would know if my dog was crying in the same spot all day and all night. Uh, Casper's not even a vocal dog. You have to like, he, he gets a little vocal when he plays with Nobu. Um, but like he's part husky. He doesn't howl or bark at things like sirens and stuff. It has to be like two to three people howling that gets him to howl. Long fucking story short, it's not the dog they're thinking of. So I respond and I leave a note and I say, you know, it's not me. Casper doesn't have a cage. I work from home all day. Make sure you have the right unit before just accusing someone of neglecting their animal. Um, and I leave that out there for the day. So I'm like, you know, I feel like that's a fine response. I'm just, you know, it's not me, right? And I left it out. I accidentally left it out overnight. I meant to take it in in the evening because I didn't know if the note was left, for the first note, I didn't know if they left it at night, like before bed or in the morning before they left for work. So I just wanted, I wanted it to be out there for a while to give them opportunity to see it. Um, so then the next morning, cause I forgot to take the note down. The next morning I look, when I take Casper, I take him out of his cage that he's been in all day and night and we go for our morning walk and someone else, not the, cause it's different handwriting. Someone wrote on like the little blank amount of paper, um, or the little amount of paper that was blank on the paper I used in my reply. And they said, no, comma, it's here from another source. I'm sorry. I explained to you like the fucking debunking the accusation, right? He doesn't have a cage. I'm here all day. It's not my dog. You respond and say, no, it is. Are you okay in the brain? Well, no, it's not actually. And I've already given you several reasons to show that it's not. Do you, want, do you need to come into my fucking house? That's not happening. So that annoys me. Um, <laughs> also, sorry, the pauses, if you're a listener only, it's me drinking from my smoothie. So that annoys me because it's like, okay, one person already thinks that it's me. Now another person has just completely thrown away what I said about my own animal and doubled down and said, no, you're the one neglecting your dog and locking it up all day. So that annoys me. <laughs> and warning, I, listen, if this was an I, am I the asshole? The answer would be yes, I am the asshole because this note that I leave back is not kind um, at all. But also, I'm not gonna be kind to nosy neighbors that accuse me of abusing my dog. So I respond and I say along the lines of like, no, it's fucking not. And I, I say again, he doesn't have a cage. I triple underline it. I say, um, he's not in the same spot all day. I am home all day. Double underline that bitch. Um, I was, listen, I could have cut out this section because I said like, use your genius sleuthing skills and put your ear to my door. Wow, no noise. Listen, I know that's petty and passive aggressive. Actually, I think that's just aggressive. Um, and then I say, so as I previously mentioned, make sure you have the right unit before playing wannabe detective or like get the leasing office to look into it or like get the leasing office involved so someone competent can look into it. And then I said, PS it's upstairs, dumbass. Um, and yes, uh, guys, again, I know that was mean of me. Um, I don't like people. I don't like um, people accusing me of abusing my dog either. So 
Yeah, that was unkind of me to say. Anyway. <laughs> but I didn't leave that one out for that long. I left it out for maybe two hours because honestly, I kept getting really anxious because one of my issues or I guess something I would like to work on is my focus on people's perception of me. And so when I wrote the note, it was like I wrote it, you know, feeling like the frustration and the need to defend myself. But then after I posted the note and I was, you know, driving Lexi to work and I was thinking about it and I was like, I look like a dick. Mm. Mm. I was too aggressive with that. There was no need to do that. People are going to think that I'm a bitch, which like it shouldn't matter. People thinking I'm a bitch shouldn't matter, to be honest. Um, but also I kind of don't want the people around me to think I'm a bitch. I don't know, I just don't really want that. So I did not end up taking the note down. Technically that does mean I got the final say, but also I'm not sure how many people saw my second note because I took it down like right when I got home from taking Lexi to work. Um, what did I, I, I had to do something after that though. I got gas. Um, took Lexi to work and got gas and then went home. So in that time frame is how long the note was up. Um, so I imagine some people saw it. It was posted, you know, around when people would be leaving for the nine to five shift. So I hope people don't think I'm locking this dude up all day. To say I mistreat this dog is just genuinely laughably not true. <laughs> Which is why it also shouldn't matter that people, there might be people that think I don't treat him right. Because it's like, well, yeah, you can think that and that's not cool to think. But also, the dog is cared for and that's what should matter, not what people think of me. So I'm just trying to like, let that sink into my brain. And I, but I also, I'm really bad at confrontation. I get like really anxious with confrontation. So I keep thinking like, I don't know. I keep, every time I like leave the apartment and come back, I'm always like worried. I'm like, what if there's a note on my door? But yeah, I was on like a two day war with my neighbors and I don't know who won. Cause like, I think I did, but did I really? I'm not too sure if I did, to be honest. Mm. Here's a here's a bummer thing that's going on. Nobu got neutered yesterday. Um, and you have to like, he's got to be in the cone for seven days and you have to limit the play activity, the jumping and all that stuff. Um, especially in the first 24 to 48 hours, which means long story short, Nobu is locked in the bathroom. He's got, you know, water in the litter box and that's where the food bowls are. Um, but he's like, he comes out sometimes. I'll take him out sometimes if like, I know he's sleepy, but he, dude, Nobu is so much. He's so, he's not too much, but he's a lot. That man is so energized and he's always playing and he's always just being a mischievous gremlin. So he's in the bathroom for his own good and it makes me sad and it makes him sad. But also not gonna lie, it is nice because whenever I go into the bathroom, he's especially happy to see me. So that does feel good. <laughs> Can't lie, but it's temporary. And I keep telling him that hopefully he, I hope he knows that it's helping him, but I don't know. What if he doesn't? What if he's like gonna hate me forever? He doesn't seem to, so I'm not too stressed. Oh, when I was cleaning Lexi's car this morning, 
I broke a nail, like a like a one of my fake nails cut came off, and I just threw it away. Because I've had these for like a week and a half now. It's probably time for them to come off. My nails underneath are grown out now, which is what I wanted. Um, I like to have like fake nails during the growing out process of my natural nails. Because I just like having long nails kind of all the time. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do with my nails is do just like a nail strengthening thing. And I have these little, it's uh, the Hello Kitty X Cream Shop collab. But they did a nail polish thing. So it's 50 different like cute fall slash Halloween-y Hello Kitty nail decals. And I'm going to do like, it came with this clear coat that's like got calcium or some helpful shit for your nails in it. So that's what I'm going to do. Because kind of I've kind of been on my like bodily care game recently. Like I've been trying to get better at my nail health. Been trying to, you know, I'm growing my hair out. I'm not bleaching it anymore. I'm just, I'm eating healthier. I'm just on a little, I don't know. I've been more into fitness recently. I'm like really into fitness especially like dance and pilates and yoga in that order yoga is hard for me to get into because whenever i want to like move you know like it's hard to explain the reasons that i go to pilates and yoga should be different reasons right because pilates is an exercise and the kind of yoga I do is exercise, but also there is still that like spiritual kind of connection um, and the connection with like the people in your practice. It's a very like Zen thing, not a calorie burning, like pump in the iron kind of thing, which is my problem. Cause I go into it with that mindset. Cause I'm like, I'm here to, I'm here to exercise. I'm here to move my body and learn, you know, get better at my flexibility and my balance and my general strength and stuff. And you do that with yoga, but that's not like the whole part of it. You know, I'm not, my brain isn't in the yoga mindset. That's my issue. But I'm forcing myself to stick with it. I like forcing myself to stick with it because I do like yoga, but I'm just, I'm pushing through until I can like really like get yoga because you know how some people i mean literally the fucking the like owner of the yoga studio i go to like people dedicate their lives to yoga they take it very seriously um and i love that for them i would like to i would like to understand their feeling about yoga like why they're so passionate about it how they're so connected to it i would like to learn that and I would like to be on my way there. I will say though, I keep doing this with my hand. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> I will say though, yesterday in yoga was not fun. I'm out of focus. Yesterday's yoga class was not fun because the AC keeps going out in the building. Um, I've not been taking classes there very long and it's gone out twice. So, guys, can we fix it, please? Because I specifically asked, and I'm obviously the most important person on earth. <sighs> this week, how, first of all, let me, dude, I am talking with my hand a lot right now. Why I'm doing that. <laughs> um, firstly, the question for this episode, uh, how's y'all's week been, right? Cause this is coming out on Friday, today. I am, <laughs> got, you wanna know a little secret about these podcasts is that they're very, like their goal obviously is to feel very like, you know, off the cuff, in the moment, relaxed, like a chill sesh. And I hope, well, that's the vibe I hope it gives. I hope it gives that but also that is the vibe behind the scenes because literally I turn this light on, I sit in my bed, 
like day of the day I'm recording this today the day you're watching this is the day I recorded it I record the episodes and then I I go and if there's anything where I'm like uh eh, maybe cut that out um I do that usually that doesn't happen that really only happens when I'm like talking about something more serious and I want I just want to make sure that like my point comes across in the best way because when I talk off the cuff I tend to not you know talk my best I really like to, in, in serious conversations, I like to come prepared. So sometimes I do have to cut a few things out. Um, but I do that the same day. And then right when that's done exporting, girl, it goes to YouTube. <laughs> this is a few hour process. <laughs> Cause they're so fun and easy. I really do like having a podcast, especially one like this. Mm. Excuse me, big burp. What was I saying though? Oh yeah, so um, the question was how, how you guys' weeks have been to let me know that. Um, and my week, kind of not been great. Um, I'm on my period this week. Well, actually I, I think I still technically am. Mine usually does the thing where it's like there for you know the first few days and then it stops and you're like, oh my God, it's done. And then it comes back. It's doing that right now. So hopefully it'll be done like tomorrow. But yeah, it's just been, it's kind of been a, a little bit of a tough week, especially the first half. The first half of the week was especially tough because I was on my period and also trying to get some things done, but you guys are gonna see all that in the vlog. So it's kind of hard to talk about like upcoming things. <gasps> oh, sorry. Oh, that was so, sorry, this is great for me but also kind of bad of me. I really don't like to check my phone during the podcast. I honestly, I didn't realize it was on the bed until it, I like my hand went under a fold in my blanket and the phone was there and out of habit I looked at it. Sorry, I like this to be a no phone zone other than like the screen connecting us. Guys, what's going on with the hands? <laughs> they really have a mind of their own, but anyway. Um, sometimes I get to pick Lexi up early from work because her planning period is like the last class period of the day. So ooh, I can pick her up in like 40 minutes instead of, God, how long would that be? Like two and a half hours? No, two hours. Oh my God. That's so exciting because I love hanging out with her. <laughs> Oh, that's a life update. We're currently working on trying to find the best promise rings because we are kind of picky with what we want. Um, and the possibilities are endless when you shop online. That's the sad truth. Not sad truth, but like kind of a sad truth. But I don't know. That's actually a good question. Is it worse to have infinite choice and so you never really make a decision because you never or not never you know but it's harder to settle on something because you're always thinking of what else could be out there right is that the worst or is it worse to have a more limited amount of choice because then it's like what if you don't love any of them but that's all there is Got the brain, got the brain juices flowing today with the fucking, the what would you do's. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but we're looking for like some, nothing, we want it, okay. We each kind of want a different style. Actually, I'll just show you, I think I screenshotted it. I think next paycheck, this is the ring I'm gonna get. We're not getting matching rings, we're getting coordinating rings. Let me see if I screenshotted it. Fuck, I screenshotted a few of them. I don't remember which one I decided was the one, but there's this website that does these like gorgeous moss agate rings. Oh gosh, please focus. And also I apologize if you are just a listener. I think that's the one I was settled on because I'm not gonna lie, the camera battery died. But what I was saying is that while I do really like 
a more unique, less traditional kind of ring for something like, I don't know, for a promise ring or like, or hold on, for a promise ring and then an engagement ring and then a wedding ring, I do, you know, I still want it to have more of a unique look, but style-wise, like the actual form of the ring, I would want to still look more marital, you know? So that's why I, I do think I'm gonna gut Oh my god, I cannot freaking talk. Freaking. Yeah, we're 14 again. But I think that's why I am going to get the promise ring that I showed the first one that had just the moss agate with the two. Those were probably cubic zirconia. I am not someone that places value on like expensive jewelry. I really don't care about expensive jewelry. Like I've especially never seen the hype with like diamonds to be honest i just think there are cooler stones out there um so i don't know that but that's also why it's like since that doesn't matter to me i would still like it to look marital if that's the right word i'm actually not too sure <sighs> what else is there to talk about um we can talk about Ooh, I listened to Olivia Rodrigo's new album yesterday, finally. Um, there were a few songs that I really liked. Most were, like, good. There was really only one or two that I, like, wasn't a huge fan of. One, I'm gonna have to look at the title names. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I don't know, is this gonna make people mad? <laughs> Let's find out. I think it was logical. I was not a fan of logical. Um, but yeah, some of them were really good. I mean, I've already heard Bad Idea Right and Vampire because those came out like before the album came out. Um, so I really liked them both already. I really liked Lacey and Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl. Um, I also did quite like Teenage Dream and Pretty Isn't Pretty. I thought that Get Him Back, Love is Embarrassing, um, Making the Bed, I thought that those were like fine, you know? It was honestly, this is like a, this is a, this is a stupid complaint because like you have to get it in your head beforehand. You're listening to Olivia Rodrigo. Who? You're listening to Olivia Rodrigo. Sorry. So you kind of just have to go in preparing like, okay, she's going to talk about boys and like her exes. But it was like, it's particularly when it's like one song is about a boy and then the next song is about a boy. And it's not the fact that like, it's a boy, you know, I think I would say the same thing if it was about girls. My point is just like the repetitive subject matter. Can we switch it up a little bit? But also, there's nothing wrong with her singing about her exes and stuff. Because sometimes you really do need to listen to songs that remind you of your shitty ex. And that's where Olivia Rodrigo, that's who she makes music for. <laughs> so, those are my thoughts on her album. Um, I'm not going to try and get tour tickets just because I am kind of turned off of the idea of like really big concerts. Like, specifically just getting tickets for them. The whole fucking hassle. Because I remember the first time Olivia went on tour, I was in that fucking waiting line for so long. And then my place came up. And I don't even remember what happened. Because the last time she toured was, like, two years ago, I think. Um, but fucking... I th think it didn't even matter that I had waited. The tickets had already, like, sold or had been so expensive... Um, I think it might have even crashed. I think the website might have crashed, which I don't know if that's Ticketmaster's fault or Olivia's because she, not her, like her fault, but you know, she was quite popular and she still is. So I don't know who's to blame for that, but let's blame Ticketmaster because why not? Sorry, the blue is not the vibe. I just wanted to see if anything else was the vibe. And it kind of doesn't seem like it, but I don't know. Are you, uh, we're going to stick with this one because why not? This weekend is going to be 
not like exciting, but I am looking forward to this weekend because it's the first weekend that we have in like a few weeks where we don't have anything planned. Like we don't have anywhere we have to go be, you know, like we had to be at a family thing last weekend. And then before that we were out of town um, for Labor Day and fucking we were doing something before that and then something before that and then something before that. I think for the past like five or six weeks. We have just had things to do. Um, and this is the first weekend in a while that we were like, we don't, we don't have any commitments this weekend. That's crazy. What are we gonna, the world's our oyster. That's amazing. What we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna go thrifting because her school's spirit week is next week. And one of them is camo. Like one of the themes is camouflage day. Neither of us own camo, so we are gonna go. We're gonna like make a day out of thrifting though, because we do. We also just love thrifting. We need to get the camouflage, but we also just love thrifting. So, you guys are gonna be coming with us for that. Look out for that. That will be a fun video, hopefully, of just like doing a day of thrifting intensely with us. Um, because we're gonna go to the bins. We've not been to the Goodwill bins in Austin, but we're gonna go, and I'm very excited for that. Um, I also think it'll just be a fun video because of how different our styles are, so. <sighs> I just talked a lot. I feel like I just talked a lot. But, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else I wanted to bring it to the pod today. This might just be a shorter episode, though. I think the episodes where I just talk about life are a little bit shorter gonna be a little bit shorter especially um like when i'm not talking with someone because lexi will be on here and there um sage you know sage will be on the podcast any really any friends that i you know people i know will sometimes appear on the podcast long story short so it'll be better then when we can just chat shit but it is a bit hard for me to just talk out loud about random things for like a consecutive hour. It's a little hard on the brain, but it's also especially hard on the throat. Um, and around this point is where I start to, f to falter. So that sucks. Oh my God, guys. <laughs> Good thing I just thought of something so I can keep talking though. Um, I finally saw the trailer for the new Exorcist movie. That trailer is scary as hell. That's crazy that they're just showing that like on TV, unprovoked, you know? Like the, just what the little girls, when they're possessed, what they look like. You can just play that as a YouTube ad. That better not play on like YouTube kids. That doesn't, right? They monitor their ads. I should be the one that has the answer to that, but also I don't because I don't have a kid. Um, I just have the YouTube part of YouTube kids. <laughs> uh, but dude, I was freaking, I'm learning anti-fragile, the dance right now. Um, and one of the ads that came up was that Exorcist movie. I was freaked. I was like, they, those are creepy, scary children. Like the effects they have on them. It's kind of crazy that just anyone can see that. Just at any point that can just pop up on a TV. I don't know why that just came into my head. Because I was thinking about the little girl. One of them. I am. I'm not going to lie though. It looks like a movie I could watch. I'm kind of picky with modern horror. Uh, or I guess not just modern horror. That's that's a way too broad of a phrase. But um, specifically like general public kind of horror. You know like the Evil Dead remake. Um, and probably this, you know, this new Exorcist movie. I'm just not a fan of movies like that because they tend to, as I have heard about, um, the recent Evil Dead movie. It's not a remake. Sorry, I think I called it a remake. I know it's, um, it's within the series, but it's not a remake. Um, but just something about, like, that general public horror movie, I guess, is that it always is just like, how fucking gory can we get this? You know, when it's like pointless. And this is something I've noticed particularly 
in possession type movies, you know, like ghostly movies, paranormal movies. Um, and I don't like it. You know, I think that to be fair, this is obviously a nuanced topic, right? Because what I like is different from what other people like. Um, I'm kind of more on the squeamish side when it comes to gore and stuff. But my thing is like, if someone's possessed and you can do like weird things with the body, why are you gonna start like shaving your skin off with a cheese grater? Like of all the things you could do, it's not that that's not creative, but it's more random than it's creative, you know? Like the fucking, um, oh gosh, in one of the Conjuring movies, I don't remember which one, I wanna say it might have been the third one or the second one. It might have happened in both, to be honest. Um, but, you know, the, it was the third one. It was the third one. The child actor that was being possessed, um, they had like, a, you know, stunt double, but the stunt was like gymnastics and shit. And that fucking kid, could, like the stuff that he was doing in the movie was like stuff his body could actually do. It just like doesn't look right. And that shit I think is very cool. Um, I think gore for shock value is very not cool, actually. But I could also just get into a bigger rant about like needless things in movies and that can get controversial. So I'm going to not do that. We're not going to go that deep into the conversation today. I was just thinking about that movie. You know what scary movie I do want to see though is um, Talk To Me. I've heard it's very good. I just am a chicken and I... Whenever I watch scary movies, I really don't like watching them in theaters because it makes me more scared. Because guys, I love horror and like horror movies, but I also am a pussy. I'm scared. Duh. Um, so I don't like to see them in theaters. I like to see them in the comfort of my own home because I'm like, okay, I can control everything here, mostly. Um, so I need that to fucking, let's find out. When is that going on streaming? I'm being bad and getting on my phone during the podcast, but it's for the greater good. Oh. Oh. It's been available for like a while, actually. Um, Talk to Me was made available to wider audiences across the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom on July 28th. 2023 so well shit maybe i'll watch that tonight or maybe we'll watch that tonight but also i wouldn't count on it because also my stepsister is in a band and her like band is playing in austin tonight so we were thinking of seeing that but it also depends i don't know what kind of day lexi's had yet she might not want to leave the house tonight so maybe we'll watch the movie maybe we'll go to a show tonight I'm gonna go though because I've been talking for quite a bit um, and I also can't sit like this for very long when I'm menstruating because I get very bad back pain when I menstruate. So there was this. That was the eighth episode of Gray Space. Um, Casper has been here the whole time. Bro is just eepy. But, but... Thank you for watching or listening to this episode of Gray Space. Um, if you're a listener, you can, um, you know, you can rate the podcast, you can share it. Um, and there's like a question thing on Spotify. I don't know how that works. I think it asks you a question on your screen. If you want to, you know, just if you want to engage with the podcast, engage with the podcast, right? YouTube, same deal. Like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you next week. We'll be back on our regular schedule next week. This week we didn't have a vlog or like a second video, right? No, we did not. But that will change. Okay, bye. <laughs>